Hundreds of years ago, the first Chinese came to the far-flung southern tip of the African continent, most of them originally from southern China. In the centuries since, they've made homes here. They've managed to thrive over the decades, and they're not leaving anyone behind. In downtown Johannesburg, you can find the Hongning Chinese aged home. In Chinese culture, families take care of the elderly. It's lunchtime and food's being prepared for the residents. A meal you won't find at a regular old age home in South Africa. The food that we prepare is Chinese food for the uh, old folks because they're used to eating Chinese food. And then we also have the various festival days like the Chinese New Year or Dragon Boat Festival. Maybe they would eat uh, dumplings that, it, uh, that we would try to prepare for them. The histories of the people who call this place home are diverse, filled with both struggle and joy. My parents were born in South Africa. And I'm also born in South Africa. Where were you born? 34, 1934. We had hard times because we weren't, you know, we, our parents didn't have money. So my mother used to work very hard to bring us up. We were a family of six. And then we went to the colored school because those days they didn't allow us to go. There was a Chinese school, but very small, you see. So we didn't have the money to come into town to go to the school. So I went to the colored school, there where we lived in Alexander Township. I didn't have many friends because, you know, the less friends you have, the better. But I was very happy there at that school. But the history of the Chinese in South Africa goes back far further. And Diane Mann would know all about it. She quite literally wrote the book with help from her co-author. My co-author Melanie Yep and I um, tried to go back to see when the first Chinese arrived. And we've traced the um, the first arrivals uh, to around 1660 at the time of Jan van Riebeck arriving at the Cape and having brought some um, what we would probably have called convicts um, from Batavia to come and work his market gardens so that the ships passing around the Cape could get fresh provisions. The big wave of immigration turned up when gold was discovered on the Rand. Okay, the, the Chinese used to follow gold around. Kamsan means gold mountain. We still, um, in local Cantonese, refer to Johannesburg as Kamsan. There are in fact two Chinese communities in Johannesburg. The first, the Chinese who are now South African citizens. The second, a new generation of people who've come from China to work. This is the heart of uh, what was then the Chinatown where the uh, immigrants from China, the regional immigrants from China, came here to make a living. There is another Chinatown in Surudin for the newer immigrants. In the old days here, people would go to a Chinese school, a Chinese-only school, and that was because of the segregation laws. But now, people can buy property anywhere. People can actually go to any schools they like. So the community gets thinned out, you know, the community gets integrated. How we integrate with the new immigrants is actually quite difficult on an individual-to-individual basis because they speak, they're more Mandarin-speaking. And we from the southeast of China, we are more Cantonese-speaking. So there is a language barrier, even though we, we are Chinese. There are other persistent challenges too for both these Chinese communities. Some businesses have been targeted in recent waves of xenophobic attacks. But Chinese communities in South Africa also do their part to help the country they've grown to love. Donating to children's homes, for instance, and helping firefighters during recent disasters. Making a difference where they can. It's so heartwarming for us to be able to have the support of the Chinese community here locally. They've gone above and beyond. South Africans, too, have been getting to know China better. Chinese New Year has in recent years become an event for all South Africans. The most important cultural event on the social calendar for China. 
for Chinese who've lived in South Africa for generations. We went to America and to Canada, but then he didn't like it. So he says, no, South Africa is his home, and we came back. For Chinese who are seeking new opportunities here. And for South Africans who are keen for closer contact with an ancient culture. Lindim Tongana, CGTN, Johannesburg, South Africa.